We're going to start with the scripture. It's Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. It's, if you're following along in your pew Bible, it's on page 981. So let's find that if you can. Page 981, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The reading of the word. Uh, ASP, if, you're, if, you're, if you've been around this church for a long time, you've heard uh, a message like this, or you've seen slide presentations like this, maybe 25, 27 times, something along those lines. Those numbers. If you're new to church, this new to Christ Church, ASP stands for Appalachian Service Project. And it was a ministry, this was the 50th summer of service for ASP. They service 25 different counties in Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, Virginia, and North Carolina. They get about 15,000 volunteers a year. So we're going to tell that story today. I'll, I'll, I'll interlace some other facts about ASP as we, as we share. But first, I want to bring up some special people. Uh, I want to bring up Scott Walters and Steve Holtz, and I want to bring up uh, Mark and Tracy Burkhart and uh, John Smith, just to talk about the leadership team. Uh, there's been a transition this year uh, as these people come forward. In 1991, my good friend Scott Walters uh, got the call uh, from the Lord through some friends and acquaintances in Franklin, uh, and he went to ASP. Uh, he had to make some sacrifices to do so, but he went. And when he came back, uh, David Holstey and he met, and he was encouraged to, to get ASP started in Christ Church. And he called his good friend, Steve Holtz. Uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, and 27 times later, 275 volunteers later, and countless hours and miles later, uh, here we are now. So I want to give these two guys a round of applause. We, we've... We've, we've transitioned a bit. Uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes work uh, and countless thankless hours that these guys have put in. And kind of just to keep it going and to give them a bit of a break and allow them to have a different role, we've kind of figured out a way to kind of slowly transition. So John Smith is our youth director. Uh, John's been a great uh, advocate for ASP. This is the first time that we had more youth than adults. ASP at Christ Church is multi-generational, it's a family ministry, but we had 24 youth and we had 22 adults, and that's thanks to John. Uh, we, we've, we've gotten a bit wiser, we've brought a, a female into the leadership team, so Tracy and Mark Burkhardt are here, and she brings a ton of wisdom and uh, great, great things to the leadership team. So let's give these three a round of applause as well. ASP is, uh, if you were here, at, if you've been here at any of these services, you know how special the stories are. It's difficult to relay exactly uh, what happened uh, because you guys weren't there and you only get a piece of the story, uh, but I think that piece of the story is something that can really uh, inspire you to go to ASP or inspire you to make a difference in your day, uh, daily life here in Franklin. Uh, last Saturday, we traveled to Anstead, West Virginia, uh, 14 vehicles, 46 people 
Uh, and we went to Anstead, West Virginia, which is a, a starting point for us. We always travel there on Saturday and we stay at Lover's Leap Baptist Church. We have uh, some food and fellowship. We do some crafts, which is the favorite, favorite aspect for some of our not so patient people. Uh, but Tracy took care of us this year and it was a lot better. We do some swimming uh, and it's a blast. And then on Sunday, uh, we traveled to Summers County, which is southeast, about 40 miles southeast of Beckley. Uh, Summers County we went to a town called Hinton, West Virginia. Uh, and I spoke in the last service. Everybody thinks when we tell these stories about trailers and houses and people from West Virginia, uh, that it sounds like a foreign country. It isn't. And I, and I said in the last service, Hinton, West Virginia has these silly, strange, one-way streets. It, they start at a point and they wrap this way, and then you have to go around the courthouse and they wrap this way again. And if you've driven in Oil City, you know about one-way streets. If you've driven in Franklin, you know about one-way streets, and it's a strange thing. Uh, and, if, and if you think about ASP as something that's off in the distance, it's not. Go stand outside in Oil City, Seneca, Franklin, Grove City, uh, Rocky Grove, wherever, and spin around in a circle and you'll probably see an ASP house. It's very, very similar to Venango County. I think we just push it off and think it's, it's dramatically different. Uh, over the years, uh, ASP has continued to grow. Uh, one special story this year that Greg reminded uh, me to tell through Scott was Jeff Spade. So you think about the impact that ASP can have. Two years ago, Jeff Spade, who is a member of our church from Franklin, went to ASP. He gave his life to Christ when he was at ASP. You're, you're there, he had a great experience and wasn't really sure about where he stood, and he, and he you know, professed his faith in Jesus Christ. He's an RA, resident assistant at Grove City College. He's doing that again this year. And this summer, he's serving on staff with ASP. And he came from his center to our center, which is about a four and a half hour drive. And he came in kind of, he, he said he communicated it with the staff, but there must have been a miscommunication because he slipped in the back, slipped in the back, excuse me, and he was like a rock star. Like the, we were having a big meeting with 95 people, which ended for about five minutes because everyone was screaming and cackling and running over and hugging Jeff. So, but he's doing the same thing. Uh, ASP is a relationship ministry with some construction on the side. And the amazing part about it to me is it's run by, essentially, they have a CEO, they have a leadership team, they have a chaplain, they have all those things in place. But essentially, the day-to-day -day work is done by college students. So there's five college students that were running our center. 95 people show up, there's five college kids, 20, 21 year old kids. They're the construction consultants, they're running the money, they're buying the food, they're making sure we're safe, they're making sure we're behaving. And that gets kind of interesting and I said, and I'll say it again, you've got Steve Holtz who's been an electrician for 50 years and a 20 year old college student from South Carolina has to tell him what to do. It's, it's the weirdest and strangest thing, but it works. And because of Scott answering the call, and because of your faithful support and the support of our pastors, uh, Jeff Spade was able to be on ASP, give his life to Christ, and now he's serving there this summer. So it's just an amazing story. You think about what your impact can be. I, I didn't do anything. I can't go. I can't hammer a nail. Many of you have given money. Many of you have prayed. Many of you have supported us for the last 27 years. You're doing a ton, and we're seeing the fruits of that. Uh, and this is what we do today. We try and share that story. So we're going to bring some uh, teams up. The first team we're going to talk about is uh, Jason Rockwell's team, a.k.a. Rocky. So we'll just have you guys stand up, and then we'll bring the speakers up. So Jason Rockwell, The Rock, please stand up. Stan Smith, Marcy Ziegler, Greg Miller, Gabrielle Garmong, uh, Kale Ziegler, and Danielle Anderson. Let's give this team, this was team six, give them a round of applause. And whoever's speaking can come up. Um, okay, so please excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous. My name is Danielle Anderson, and this is my first year on ASP. Um, I, when I first started, when I first heard about ASP, which is about two years ago, 
I didn't really think all that much about it because I didn't think I'd be able to do it and be able to go. But then last year, my sister Kristen, was, it was her first year, <laughs> she came home and she was sharing all these stories about what happened on ASP and then all of a sudden she starts crying and she was crying for like basically the whole evening because <laughs> she wanted to go back. And I was like, well, if she had such a good time and she could do it, maybe I could do it. <laughs> well, this week has meant like, it's meant a lot to me because I got to, I've gotten to spend time with my family and my friends and, and Stan, which <laughs> I, <laughs> which I have now figured out his name is Roger. <laughs> Yeah, I did. This, this week has been like pretty amazing for me because like I didn't know, I was kind of like, I was confused before I went on ASP about who I was and this week has helped me, has helped me figure out like what I've wanted to do with my life and has helped me figure out who I am as a person. And as I told Tracy in the room, the only thing that I really liked about, well not the only thing, <laughs> that's not what I meant to say, sorry. Um, the one thing I really liked about this week is that we didn't have any Wi-Fi or service or anything because like we didn't have to worry about like I didn't have to get on Snapchat and see all the negative things that are on there and everyone saying that I don't just like what they say on like social media and it's just it ju that just helped a lot in like focusing on what I wanted to do this week and before I finish up, I wanted to share with, I want to share with you guys one of my favorite verses, which is Isaiah 40, 31. And it says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Don't let this scare you. Uh, I made a few notes. I'm a post-it note guy. And uh, I wish I had more time to refine and, and uh, get this ready. But I'm only supposed to talk for five minutes. I find that it is, we have witnessed so much. There's been so much happening. And we could see God doing so many things. It's so difficult to narrow that down because we, we're so excited about communicating it. So uh, I'm gonna try to make it coherent. And if I go longer than five minutes, if it starts to get boring, would you all just stand up and turn around? <laughs> and that, that'll be my signal that I am Well, for, since 1991, 1992, guys have been going, girls have been going, families have been going to Appalachia Service Project. I learned it as Appalachia whenever I was in school, but I guess that's wrong. It's Appalachia Service Project. And I have been hearing the stories, as you all, most of you all have been hearing the stories. And uh, I just retired in February from a position that required me to be there every summer. So this is my first shot at coming to ASP. But I have been listening to these stories and I thought, I want to go. I want to, these people sound like they have so much fun and, and they accomplish much in different ways that I want to be a part of that. And I want to get to know them better. So frankly, uh, my goal in going this year was to hang out with the people that have, have been going. And I wanted to get to know them better. I mean, here in church, this is a different setting. It's not designed to really get to know people. But when, when you're in a small group or when you're in a, on a mission trip, you get to know people 
and you get to be real and you, you have a special connection. And I, my expectations were exceeded tremendously. Uh, our crew was led by Rocky, and there were six of us that you've, you've just seen. We got to work on, uh, they needed on this particular home, Sharon's home, which was an aging double wide trailer, was, was coming apart. The soffit up by the roof, a, a lot of that in the front was just coming down. They needed 32 feet of that replaced. Gutters, the whole one side of the house of the gutter needed fixed. Actually, both sides needed fixed. We got to do one side. Uh, the crew I was with, we got to work on the, the bathroom. Uh, we had to take the bathroom clear apart. Now, I'm going to give a parenthetical statement here. One of my biggest fears on going on ASP as an older guy is we drive all the way down there and never stop to go to the bathroom. Well. That's not quite true. God saw that that was taken care of. Well, Sharon only has one bathroom in her house. This is out in the country in rural Hinton, West Virginia. And the first thing we did was take out the commode. <laughs> I'm going, very funny, God, very funny. Because <laughs> there are six of us here, and now we can't go through the process of elimination in the method in which we are accustomed to in the modern world. And Sharon, the homeowner, had a good relationship with the neighbor, and so she was welcome to go day and night anytime. But the rest of us are like, well, uh, and God accentuated this funny story. It rained a little bit on us. It was a, a hard sprinkle. Now, we were under the canopy, it was lunchtime, and there was a rainbow, or at least we joked about this. The rainbow came over the trees, and in front of the, in, I'm sorry, in front of the house where we were working, and the end of it was right on the commode that we had just taken out. <laughs> That's how valuable those things are. We looked inside for the gold, but the gold was the toilet. Well, actually the pot of gold, and I'm not being sacrilegious when I say this, there's, God provides for me, he's Jehovah Jireh. And later on in the day, across the church from us, we saw, it was across the road from us, we saw this beautiful chapel, an old, older chapel called Martha's Chapel, and they had built a cement block outhouse, not a brick one, but a cement block outhouse. It was nice and sturdy. It was gender specific. So we all had a place to go to take care of that. And I'm the one, thank you, Lord. <laughs> X 3, 6 and 7 are verses that God gave me close to 20 years, oh, 30 years, 30 years ago. And the story, just a little bit of the background of this story, Peter and Jesus is already gone, okay, he went up to heaven. Peter and John are at the temple testifying, witnessing to what God is doing. And there's this lame man, and he looks up at Peter and John expecting to get some money. In my life, I always wondered what my purpose was. What, do, what can I contribute? And I thought, as a, as a young man, I'm going to make a lot of money so I can give to the church, I can give to missions, I can give this and give that. And I got into all kinds of businesses trying to make money, and it didn't work. I just kept falling flat on my face. I, I wasted a lot of time. I thought I was wasting time. Didn't have anything to contribute. But in verse 6, 
Peter's looking down at this guy and he says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I'm going to give to you. That day I heard that, it spoke to me in a new way. I'd heard that, heard it many times, but God was saying specifically to Stan Smith, you don't need gold and silver to contribute something. None of us need gold and silver to contribute. Many of you have it. For example, you have given a lot so that this team could go. It's wonderful. I, I was frustrated because I couldn't, but God saw my need to know that I do have something. So we thank you for contributing that. We thank you for praying for us. You had something to contribute. I was able to contribute because I have a little bit of experience in the construction business. And folks who didn't have anything in the construction business still had something to contribute. For instance, what's God call us to do? Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And second, love your neighbor as yourself. How many different ways can we show love? It's kind of infinite. But Gary Chapman kind of refined it down to five different love languages, and we can use those love languages to love people. And I saw that this week. Marcy, uh, what was Marcy? She has the gift, one of her love languages is being with. It's time together. And she spent a lot of time with Sharon, our homeowner. And so did a few others. Uh, Rocky, a very capable crew chief, but I saw humility in him because he has much to contribute, but he didn't feel threatened whenever I came into his crew. He just delegated something for me to do, and we worked together. Uh, Gabrielle, uh, her artistic ability, the creativity that God has given her had an outlet there, and she painted a beautiful moral, mural to cover the wall, the outside wall, where we took the window out. Kale, pounding nails and bending nails. It was so much fun working with you this week. You're gifted. You can do a lot of things, and you loved by, by doing that. Greg, uh, it, is Greg here yet? We had so much fun together. Even though we weren't side by side, we got to meet each other a little bit and connect with each other. Greg might be the, his gift, I, one of his gifts that I see is sharing time together, uh, words of affirmation, and he gave that. I think I'm the only one that's uh, cut more boards than he did the wrong way. And it wasn't even his fault. It was my fault. But he was, uh, uh, he felt so bad, but uh, it was my fault. Danielle, a lovely lady who has learned to smile a lot more this week. Uh, she was willing to do anything and tried anything. And she was really good at doing some of the stuff that we couldn't do. She painted boards that we didn't have time to paint, and she was willing to do that. That's her, she was giving of her time. So we got to see all that this week. Uh, so everybody has something to contribute, even if you couldn't go. Maybe next year you would want to go. My expectations were exceeded with getting to know the people in, in this team. I want to leave you with... Uh, a verse, another verse that's been important to me. Acknowledge him in all your ways. A lot of us memorize Proverbs 3, 5, but 3, 6 also goes with that. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your paths. So I have found that the more I acknowledge him, the better my paths are directed. It's a fun way to live. Like my friend Paul Harbison said, ministry is the wake you leave behind when you follow Jesus. Think about that. We, 
we can't do it on our own. We would fail miserably, John 15, 5. You can't bear fruit by yourself. Ministry is the wake you leave behind when you follow Jesus. Let's follow Jesus. Let's let him leave a wake through us as we humbly follow him. Stan was happy that no one stood up uh, and walked out or turned around. You, you really get to know someone when you crawl under a house in a space. Gab was crawling under the house, and there was a board that was sticking down. And if you know Gab, he didn't fit under the house. So I took the chop saw, and I cut it off, or I got the circular saw, and I cut that board off so he could, he's like a cat. But the space he was going in was just a little too small for the size of cat that he is. Um, Stan... When we go down, uh, before we go down, they send the jobs that we're going to do. There's, we have six crews. They send them up, and, and Mark and John, they start to divvy up the jobs and who's going to work where. So there was a debate about Todd's team and Rocky's team. So the staff went to John, and John said, go talk to Mike. I don't know why, but he came to me. And I never wanted to make a decision without talking to both Jason and talking to Todd. So I talked to Todd. And I talked to Jason, and Jason said, go talk to Stan. So there was no intimidation. Rocky was super excited you were on his team because he didn't have to worry about anything. But I went to Stan, and I said, Stan, there's a plumbing job. And he looked at me, and he goes, is it, is it copper? Is it CPVC, or is it PEX? And I patted him on the side, and I said, you'll be fine. And I walked away, <laughs> and I said, you've got the plumbing job. Um, there are two ministries. Before we bring up the, the last team in this service to speak, there are two ministries that we've added. Uh, they call them floaters. Uh, so we have an electrical team that's a floating team. So Steve Holtz and, and Megan Billingsley, let's have both of you guys stand up. Um, if you know anything about construction, electrical stuff is something. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> electrical stuff is something that scares everybody. And, and having those guys around working was, was a blessing. And that's something that Steve's been able to contribute uh, a ton the last three years, I think, as a floating team. The other uh, floating team we had was Lou Slaughterback. Stand up, Lou. Let's give Lou a round of applause. <laughs> Lou uh, took his snow cone machine down in, his, uh, in, his, in a trailer, and then we picked different people to go with him and be a support for him during the day. And he went around to different sites. He was at the picnic. He was at the uh, at the, the center at the end of the workday. And, and we drove by a bank every day on the way home from our site. And, you know, the bank thermometer hit you in the face, 88, 87, 91. You know, those are the things we saw down there. And Louis Snowcombs really helped us out. Uh, the next team that we'll, we'll talk about is Team 2, uh, which is, was my team that I was blessed to be on. The crew chief, Gab Garmung, myself. You guys can stand up. Sarah Speth. Trey Corelli, Kristen Anderson, Maddie Bacher, Nick Schwartzler. So let's give those folks a round of applause. All right. All right, so hi, I'm Maddie Bacher. Um, I was on Gab's team, this is my third year on ASP, and I didn't tell my mom that I was speaking, so how's it going? <laughs> um, so my story for this week kind of goes along with some of the stories that were told during the first service. Um, people were saying how they were just searching this week and we weren't really sure why we were supposed to be here. We knew there was supposed to be something because it's ASP, there's always something, that's why we go. Um, but I, I just couldn't quite figure it out until the very last day, Friday, during our share circle. Um, first, I'm gonna give a little background to tie this in. Um, so if you know anything about my family, you know that we do food. Food is what we do. We serve people, we make things for people. Um, that's, that's kind of how we just like love on people. We just, we serve them because we love them and you're supposed to serve people that you love. Um, so during the share circle, um, one of our cooks came out from the back and decided to share some 
things about her mother, who was our homeowner that we worked for. She said that Mary um, had been suffering with pretty bad depression and just wasn't herself. She didn't want to get out of bed. She, um, she just couldn't do any of the things that used to make her happy until ASP showed up. And Tia, which is her daughter, she told us that um, Mary just really started to come out of her shell and how she loved to do food. Food was her thing. That's how she showed love to people, just like my family. Um, when she said that, it just really hit me because um, on Friday for our lunchtime at the site, Mary made us food. She, we had a cookout. She cooked for us on her grill. She made some really great cowboy beans, her own recipe. And then the day before, she made these famous deviled eggs for our picnic that we had with the whole ASP group. And um, at the site before the picnic, she gave one to Sarah and me, and we tried them. And I said, they tasted just like grandma's, and they did. So I just really connected with her through that. And like I said, it, I just couldn't find my God moment until that very last day, the night before we left, when Tia came out and said these things about her mom, and it just really hit me because that's, it was just amazing because when we were having our little cookout on Friday, we didn't really think there was that kind of reasoning behind it. We didn't know that's why it was special. We were just like, oh, okay, this is cool. Actual food, because the center food was a little rough in the beginning, but... Uh, <laughs> um, then after Tia said that, it just, Chris and I just looked at each other, our mouths were hanging open, we were like, that's, that's what it meant, that's why it happened. So, if you're thinking about going on ASP, I really think you should, because it's just, everyone has an amazing experience, and whether you get your God moment in the beginning of the week, or literally at the last second like I did, um, it's definitely worth your while. Good morning, my name is Kristen Anderson. And I'm Nick Swatzler. And I'm sure you're wondering why there's two of us up here at the same time, because that's kind of strange, but God kind of works through both Nick and I at the same time this week, through the same story. Um, the past couple months, and this past week even, I w I've been frustrated with God, like very frustrated. I just, I couldn't feel him, I couldn't see him. And <laughs> that was really, it was just frustrating for me. And I was frustrated because so many things were going wrong this week, like John fell during basketball and got hurt, Trey and Jake lost their wallets, I was stuck under a house doing insulation all week, I got fiberglass in my eyes and my throat, and I was just frustrated because I couldn't see what, what was coming out of this, like why am I here, what's good about this? And the, by the last day I was just like, God, where are you at? I've, everyone has their ASP God moment, where's mine? And Nick came up to me at breakfast and he was like, Kristen, I'm going to go under the house with you this week, or today, and I'm excited about it. And I was like, because at the beginning of the week, Nick will tell you it's... I have, like, a huge fear of spiders. Like, it's, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I really don't like small spaces, and I, I really don't like to get dirty either. Like, no. <laughs> so, when um, Gab and I went, uh, like... Uh, was I think it was Sunday night, um, they take the team captain and um, a member and they go to the houses and they just meet the people and get to know them a little bit and I went with Gab. So I met Mary and uh, we were going through like the different things that we had to do and I saw that crawl space and I looked at, I was like, I no, never going under there. Um, everyone can, uh, other people can go under but I'll just like paint or something. So it was, it was a really uh, big surprise when I said I'd go under, but there was, and at the center, um, every morning and every evening when I'd go brush my teeth, I would walk past. They had like different quotes and Bible verses on the wall, and there was one that really stuck out, and it was, um, God does not call the equipped, he equips the called, and that really stuck out to me because I felt like 
Like even if it was just like putting insulation and snow fencing under the house, I felt like God called me to help this woman. Like she, she needed insulation. Um, and I just felt like God equipped me with courage to go under the house. And it, that was my God moment there when Chris and I both figured it out. We were talking about it and that was mine. And when Nick came under with me, my mood went from like the bottom of the pits all the way up and I could just tell that this was, we were supposed to be here together and we got everything done by 11. But God wasn't done there. He wasn't done when we said goodbye around five, five o'clock. And that evening we went with Mike to go get ice cream and we, stopped, we had to stop by Mary's house because he had to make one more small fix. And Nick and I went in and we were saying goodbye to the dogs because we, we both really liked the dogs. And um, we went to say goodbye to Mary and we were just all crying in her kitchen and she was telling us how we had made a new home. We had a new place if we ever needed her. She would get the bedrooms ready for us. And that just really hit me because the whole week when we would ride with Mike, I would take his iPad and I would DJ. And we would listen to the song Home by Philip Phillips. I'm sure you guys would all know it if you listened to it. But it was just all about how like you're gonna make, you can make a home with certain people. It doesn't matter where you are. And Mary just said that and Nick and I just, we were both just crying our eyes out because that really hit us. Like we were frustrated all week. Both of us were just kind of done. We just kind of wanted to go home, but God had been working all week while we were listening to that song and it just hit us on Friday. And it really, it meant a lot to us. And that was our God moment together. There was three of us in the car waiting for them when they were having this awesome moment. And we were like, what the heck's going on in there? Come on, let's go. We got to get our ice cream. Yeah, yeah now I feel awful. Um, <laughs> Nick. Yeah, Nick, uh, it was really cool to see Nick. He was really almost like edging towards it. So the first day uh, he was out cutting insulation and he was 10 feet from the house. And then he would hand stuff under Wednesday, like he stuck his like up to his torso. And I just saw it was like the Wizard of Oz, like the, the, the witch, which his legs were there. It was just Nick's legs. And then he was, you know, it was just kind of really cool to see uh, you know, just warming up to it and God working in that. Um, just want to close with a, a few brief thoughts. You know, Scott Walters got the call in 1991, came back, uh, you know, maybe conned Steve Holtz into it or forced Steve Holtz into it, I don't know. Steve got the call the next year. David Holstie supported it. 1998, my wife and I came to this church. We had David Holstie over to our house and I was drywalling in my kitchen and a seam was dry, drying and, and David Holsey was kind of wandering around. He put his hand on the wall and he checked the seam and he said, you need to come to ASP. 2001, my wife, my wife came. 2002, we both went and I've been every year since. Uh, last year, my son went. Uh, next year, pray for all of us because Isaac gets to go. Uh, and it's, you know, this is the 17th time I've done it. The scripture, Isaiah 6, 8, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. So something to pray about, something to think about. Uh, are you the person who needs to be sent in 2019? Thanks for your support. Uh, we, we love you all. Before we wrap up with our uh, final song and our, our closing prayer, let me just share with you the verse that God has been putting on my heart all week. Um, it appears several places in the Gospels, about four times Jesus says the same thing, and it appears eight times in the book of Revelation, these words, anyone who has ears, listen. I'm convinced that we go through life many days and we attribute safety, provision, connection, community to a variety of things, but not God. God is saying, if we have ears, 
we can see those things as God moments. You've heard some stories this morning of youth and adults who found God moments in the everyday. I'm going to pray that God shows you God moments today, tomorrow, this week. They don't just happen in West Virginia. They don't just happen on an ASP trip. The ripples will continue to happen. Let me pray with you guys a moment. Father God, I just thank you for these teams. I thank you, Lord, for the way you're moving in them, through them. Lord, I know they're not done seeing your hand. I pray that you would take away the veil. That Kristen and others would see your hand clearly, plainly. Today. Tomorrow. And every day. May we see you at work around us and may we seize each one of those moments. May we have ears and may we listen for how you're moving in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.